In the city of Seoul, the heartthrob is a skater named Yuna Kim. Olympic icon Brian Orser is the mentor behind the magic. Now in her own backyard, Kim and her Korean fans become Asia's best-kept secret no longer. This mega metropolis welcomes figure skating's first flight of stars in the championship season. Canadian diva Joanie Rochette has two Grand Prix wins. Ditto teenager Patrick Chan, who comes to Korea as a favorite. Today, the four cornerstones of figure skating. The men, the women, the dance, the fairs. At the Grand Prix final on CBC. Welcome to downtown Seoul and Namdaemun, the local market where you can get just about anything you fancy. Hi everybody, I'm Scott Russell. This is CBC Sports Weekend for Saturday, December the 27th, 2008. Today on the show, figure skating. Four hours of the ISU Grand Prix Final from Goyang City, just up the road. And the headliner is South Korean star Yuna Kim. At the last two world championships, she was the bronze medalist and she has taken this nation by storm. And here's the Canadian connection. Yuna is coached by the two-time Olympic silver medalist and the 1987 World Championship gold medalist, Brian Orser. Now, the ISU Grand Prix Final boasts four disciplines, the top six performers this season in each of those disciplines. A couple of Canadians are in the mix, and to break it all down for us, let's send it to our studio, our figure skating panel, led by Brenda Irving, along with Tracy Wilson and Kurt Browning. Thanks, Scott. Well, as Scott mentioned, you know, Korea doesn't have the long and rich history in the sport like Canada does. But boy, oh boy, you would not know it if you were in Korea right now. Well, these fans are crazy, and I'd say they're making up for <laughs> lost time. It, crazy about their skating. They are so passionate, and the skaters who have competed there say it's like more exciting than anywhere else in the world to compete. Yeah. Well, I think I'd rather do an exhibition there <laughs> than compete. But when you when you do it and you hit it, I, I think it's it's a it's a solid wall of foam and, and stuff, toys and stuff coming in flowers. It's pretty exciting. Pretty scary then. Yeah. 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 Dangerous sport. <laughs> anyway, there are two Canadians competing here. One of them, Canadian Patrick Chan. He won both of his Grand Prix events. Uh, the only man to do that this season. So he's got the bullseye on his back. Patrick, yeah, that's a new place for Patrick to be the guy everyone's gunning for. And it's going to be really um, interesting for us to see how Patrick handles that. But every skater who's good enough will eventually put yourself into that situation of expectation. And so I'm kind of glad that Patrick, with all his talent and all his potential, has doing it, is doing it now. Mm -hmm. And get a little bit of use, get used to this situation before, you know, Vancouver. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, Joanny Rochette also competing here. She won both of her Grand Prix competitions, and she's never skated better. She has looked terrific all year, and like Patrick, she's just not happy to be here at the Grand Prix final. She is a contender, and so they will have to get used to that and, and competing with that extra pressure, or maybe it's extra confidence, but nonetheless, as you said, it's so good this is happening now that they're experiencing it. Uh, just over a year from now, they're going to face the same kind of pressure in Vancouver and the same kind of noise so great for them to have that test run here at the Grand Prix final the first event that we're gonna have for you today is the ice dance competition if you would have asked us probably at the beginning of the season if there would be Canadian representation here we would have said for sure uh, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moore but that's not the case they have missed the whole Grand Prix season due to her injury however they are back on the ice they're training I heard from Jeff Buttle the other day their free dance is fantastic dance yeah spy. our little spy <laughs> and uh, also they will be monitored by judges and technical specialists in the next couple of days in preparation for the national championships in January. The top qualifiers for ice dance, the reigning world champions, Isabel Dolabelle and Olivier Schunfelder, and they won both of their Grand Prix competitions. Um, let's see. Are they going to win? I think so. You know, <laughs> but I'm just a single Tracy? skater. Right? <laughs> um, but I'm interested in their mind space. Like, they're thinking about that unknown factor of Scott and Tessa. And so if they do win here, um, will it be kind of a hollow win for them? And what's that doing to their, like, what are they doing? It must be a weird to compete against a ghost. Well, what will help them is the kind of reception they get for their material. So if the judges reward it with high scores and the audience really love what they're doing, then that will be enough for them to take from this Grand Prix oh, final. Sure. Also in Korea, the top American team, uh, Tanith Belbin and Ben Augusto, they were fourth after the original dance, uh, but they will not be competing in the free dance. And here to tell us why is Scott Russell. 
Thanks very much, Brenda. Here with American dance champion Tanith Belbin, who's missing Ben Augusto. They've decided to pull out of the free dance competition and the Grand Prix final. Uh, Tanith, what's going on? Well, unfortunately, Ben is experiencing an injury right now. He has a pinched nerve in his back. It's causing numbness through his leg and foot. And he did his best. He avoided practicing on it today and came out on the warm-up. But when you just have no stability, it's not safe to skate out there. So I think he made the right choice. Listen, this is a season of renaissance. We've talked about this uh, for you, too. I'm wondering if this kind of thing keeps getting in the way and stalling progress. This is just part of sport. We absolutely expect it and um, we know how to deal with it. We're veterans now, it's 10 years together that we've been competing, so we know how to handle this, and this certainly isn't a break in our momentum. We, we definitely feel like we're still on the right path, and a few days off, a little bit of TLC, and he'll be back good as new. Are you, are you still very optimistic about what might take place in Los Angeles at the World Championships? Absolutely. I think, if nothing else, this competition has proven that uh, we're in a very unpredictable field at the moment. Unfortunately, a lot of people were ill and injured, so you can't really say we were all at our best, but I think that Worlds will be a whole new ball game. Tanith, uh, thanks so much for this, and all the best to you and to Ben. Thank you very much. There you go. There's Tanith Belbin, along with Ben Augusto, pulled out of the Grand Prix Final here in Seoul. Brenda, back to you. Well, Scott, here's a look at the standings after the original dance. The reigning world champions are first. The Russian team of Domnina and Shabalin are second. Fiala and Scully are third. Hoklova and Novitsky had to withdraw because of the flu. Americans Davis and White sit in fifth position. When we return, we'll get right to the free dance. Championship figure skating on CBC Sports will continue in just a moment. Meryl Davis and Charlie White are often referred to as the other American ice dance team. They've been overshadowed in the past by Tanith Belbin and Ben Augusto, the five-time national champions. But Meryl and Charlie certainly have closed the gap this season. completing a spin here, which is one of their required elements. And what I love about this free dance is the way they weave the elements to the music. It's all part of the program. Lovely lifts, skating to the music of Samson and Delilah. The ice dance world is pretty small. This couple used to train with Tanith Belbin and Ben Augusto, but Tanith and Ben moved away from the Canton Michigan Training Center this summer. Brenda, you talked about how uh, this team has been in the shadow of Belbin and Augusto. Not anymore. The program has been very well received. They're hot on Belbin and Augusto's heels. And of course, Belbin and Augusto, as we mentioned earlier, had to withdraw because of injury.
have had tremendous success this Grand Prix season with this free dance. Once again, they're skating it beautifully here. Very high levels of difficulty and excellent execution. and Charlie White sat two points behind the third place Italian team of Fiella and Scali after the original dance. They certainly could have made up those two points here with this free dance performance. You know, when I watch these guys skate, I can't help but notice that they look so different from each other, but together they look right. And at the beginning of the program, there's that move where he lets her slide on the side of her boot, and I'm captivated after that. Like, after that move, I'm in. Subtle they and had beautiful. Me at that move. They've been skating together for 11 years, and Kurt, when that happens, you don't even walk down the street with the other person without starting on the same foot. Everything you do naturally goes in sync. And this program went in sync perfectly with the music. I loved the way the elements went with the music and not alongside it. And that is a season best free dance score for them, and that will move them into first place for the moment. They hit the nail on the head with the youth movement. Uh, Canadians Virtue and Moyer, their uh, training mates, also youngsters at the top of the podium in the world scene. Well, here is the Italian team of Federica Faella and Massimo Scali. And they will skate to Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> some talk that they too may put may have pulled out of the competition they had a accident this morning in practice in the spin where she cut her hand had six stitches certainly as a single skater it wouldn't bother you as much but uh, you know obviously with dancers hand-to-hand -hand contact all the time and Kurt, this was the move where the accident happened, and that is a simplified version of the spin. This has been a huge year for them. Heading into the season, they'd never finished better than third at a Grand Prix event. This fall, they were second at the Grand Prix of France and then were first at NHK in Japan. And this is their very first Grand Prix final. They're sitting in podium position at this time, trying to hold off Davis and White of the United States. Some beautiful moments in this program. Some of their transitions are not as fluid and smooth, though, as Davis and White's.
look at their free leg line, that's the leg that's in the air. They just don't quite have the unison and the beautiful positions as Davis and White and some of the other top teams. So one area I think they just need to smooth out a little bit more. Federica Fiala and Massimo Scali hoping that will be enough to keep them ahead of the Americans, Meryl Davis and Charlie White. You know, Tracy, I couldn't help keep thinking Federico about the injury that she had and maybe that that was making them a bit tentative. But when you have music like this and specific costumes like they chose, you really can't make any mistakes because they glare, they show like neon, and it's a risk that they, they've decided to take. And, and if you look at some of them, this is a spectacular is move here. And it's her right hand, the hand that she's actually got all of her weight on. But it was coming out of that move that was a little bit rough. And those are the transitional moments in the program that I believe they need to work on. Also that free leg line, you know, with the teams, every time the blade leaves the ice, you need to have that foot in perfect position to your partners. Otherwise, it just looks a little bit off. They need a score of close to 90 to put them ahead of the Americans. You see, they don't quite get it, so they will be in second place. Is that one of those things that when you get nervous, your free leg gets tight? And that and training. There's so much to think about that they're just missing some of the more subtle points. Oksana Domnina and Maxime Shabalin are considered Russia's number one ice dance team. Many people thought they might have won the world title last year, but the European champions had to withdraw from the worlds after Maxime suffered a knee injury. And they will skate to catch a Turian. Spartacus. Interesting opening their series of twizzles all done on one foot. More difficult. their circular step sequence here and the judges really looking down at the blade of the ice to watch the edges the curves the one foot work see they weaving they're weaving back and forth that circular step sequence can be like a single skaters triple axle or quad the highest level has a base mark of eight a beautiful lift it seemed to have a little struggle getting it into the lift though you're you're watching always for the skaters to show you effortless motion from being on the ice to being in the air and back down on the ice and often while going for the levels you do lose for the quality curve it's the risk like we see there too Well, they won the Cup of China, but lost the Cup of Russia to teammates Hoklova and Novitsky, who, by the way, had to withdraw from this competition because they're suffering from the flu.
Tracy, I'm thinking back to what you said about Davis and White earlier, how their highlight moves really were worked into the music, accentuated by the music, and that highlight move seemed to miss the music. I agree with you, Kurt. I, I, they're kind of going in and out of the music through this program, showing that it's partway through the season. This program has not fully developed yet. I think she is lovely, and I love her sense of timing. She has a really soft, sincere way of, of picking up the music yeah. and working with she it. She sells that ripped dress very well, too. Last year's Grand Prix final winners who sat in second place after the original dance. Plagued by injuries last year, he had three surgeries. As you said, Brenda, they missed the World Championships and they're still a little rough around the edges. He's constantly going in, uh, getting physio, having work done on his knee and it's limited their training. And I really think this, this is a work in progress for them. You know, when you're being held back and you can't do those six, seven hour days on the ice, it's very, very difficult halfway through a season. Here's their twizzle section at the beginning. And often teams change feet in between the twizzles to get more speed. They did it all on one, one of the lifts. Um, a rotational lift, not a particularly attractive or innovative lift. I think also they are challenged because she is fairly tall. And when, when the partner's little and petite, it's much easier uh, to have a variety of lifts and, and to lift easily. Well, the skaters are given two scores, a total element score, program component score, and then they're added together, and that is the best free dance score of the day. And we'll move Domnina and Chabaline into first place ahead of Davis and final skater son in first place after the original dance, Isabel Delabelle and Olivier Schunfelder. The 30-somethings have been together now, Kurt and Tracy, for a dozen seasons, and their perseverance finally paid off last March in Sweden when they not only made it onto the world podium for the first time, but they won the title. And they will skate to music by Pink Floyd, the great gig in the sky. Does that lip look familiar to you? Choreography by Marie-France Dubray, Patrice Lausanne. And you know what? Some of their elegance has rubbed off on this team. It's a nice look. It seems like this team just sort of took advantage of other teams' bad luck and, and swept up into what seems to be the top place in the world right now for this team. A retro look, retro music. Very clean and easy to watch. And this is a team that uh, has always made mistakes at key moments throughout their history. And I think with this choreography, you talked about the cleanness of it. I think that's really helped them to compete better.
the side-by-side -side footwork, I'm noticing more speed across the ice than a couple of the other teams. When you're on one foot alone, that's one thing, but if you're on one foot with your partner also on one foot, if your timing is off, you pull each other back. Well, some people thought that they might retire after winning the world championships, but with the Olympics only a couple of seasons away, they said they didn't want to leave. They, they want that gold medal. And when you're skating that well, why would you stop? I really like this new choreography. Uh, Dubray and Lausanne always had spectacular lifts, and that's what they have brought to their skating now. But what these two have that I think stands them apart from some of the other teams we saw, they are both technically very, very strong. So one is not helping the other along, and you show the strength of each other. And halfway through this program, I realized that I had a little smile on my face. That's a good sign. And Kurt, we've talked about the elements going to the music. Didn't they do a wonderful job with the lifts and the voice? This was subtle changes in the music. So I thought that they were able to bring them out even more with that timing that you just talked about. Very clean, very classy. This lift was almost like an optical illusion. But like the Italians, I think it's a, it's a risk. When it's very clean, it's a risk, because if, if your quality's not up, it shows, and I think it was. Their quality was up, and that definitely shows. They need a score of close to 93 to move into first place. They have that and more. So they win the first Grand Prix final of their careers. They were third last year, but first here in Korea. So the reigning world champions add another prestigious title to their resume. Isabel Delabelle and Olivier Schoenfelder take the 2008 Grand Prix final title. Russia's Oksana Domnina and Maxime Chabalin are second. Americans, Davison White are third. Here's Scott with the winners. Isabella and Olivier, uh, Grand Prix final champions, and I understand, uh, Isabella, you're not feeling that well, and it caused you perhaps to leave out that last lift in the program. Yeah, you're right. I, I was sick all the day, so I threw out. Um, but uh, we did a great job today um, for the physique uh, as we had, and uh, the audience of the public was still there, so it gave us some power to go on. And as we like so much this free dance, I have to to did to did it not just for me, Olivier, but also for Muriel and Patrice and Marie France. All right, beautiful, our Canadians. And uh, I wonder, uh, Olivier, uh, you had thought, I'm sure, as other people would when faced with sickness, that maybe it's time to pull out and uh, go on to something else. But you said no. We're going to go ahead. What, why? Why continue? Well, uh, I think uh, we love uh, skating too much to, to quit like this. We really want uh, to do our best and give something to the audience and uh, everybody who support us. So we still uh, young <laughs> enough to, to compete and uh, we just like it. Brenda Irving back with Tracy Wilson and Kurt Browning. Our next event is the men's competition. There is one Canadian in the field, Toronto's Patrick Chan, the only male skater who is undefeated in the Grand Prix season. Yes, undefeated and in a very interesting situation. And I'm going to look down to my cheat sheet here. I've got a really cool statistic that's going to help explain Patrick. Total scores for the whole season, number one, Patrick Chan. But you look down the list, you don't see his name again until ninth 
13th place. But for example, Kazuka, the Japanese skater, he's in fourth and in sixth, probably showing more consistency. But what, what a big spread for Patrick. And for Patrick, he's showing that he's definitely capable of producing yeah, greatness, but also he's not entirely there yet. He's still uh, a work in progress to and, a degree. And just 17 years and old, the 17. youngest uh, man in this competition. Yeah. Right now he's standing by with our Scott Russell. Scott. Hey, Brenda, on the steps at Go Yang Arena with Patrick Chan, the Canadian champion, who's got a spectacular season going, wins at Skate Canada and the Grand Prix of France all the way to the Grand Prix final now. Patrick, is that how you see it, a spectacular season so far? So far it is, yeah. Um, I think there's still a lot of improvements I can have uh, that can happen. Um, a lot of things are needed to get better for the World Championships. Um, but I think it's all a stepping stone to, to, the, to the World Championships and a good skate. You know what, uh, at the outset of the season, you said, I want to be top five in the world. You were ninth at the last World mm -hmm. Championships. I wonder now that you've had this kind of a season, mm -hmm. do you start to adjust those goals and expectations and say, maybe I can win this year? Definitely, definitely. Um, so far, as, I mean, looking at the two Grand Prix I won, I think the chances of even going on the podium at the World Championships isn't, uh, are pretty high. Um, that's in my opinion. Uh, and uh, yeah, so so far, but you know, I a lot of I haven't competed against a lot of the skaters um, during the two Grand Prix that I did. They were at different Grand Prix, so this Grand Prix final will be very interesting because I compete against a lot of the guys I haven't competed against. You know, it was interesting at Skate Canada. You said after the competition was over and you had won that I could have been better. I'll be better next time. Yeah. And then you said when you won at the Grand Prix of France, you know, we didn't see the real Brian Jobert. Yeah. And I'm wondering when you put that all together. Are you still looking for your best performance of the season? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I and I just hope. I'm, it's I think a timing. I'm timing it to so that I do have that perfect program at the World Championships or at the Olympics. Um, I don't think not that these competitions aren't important, but I think these are all kind of a trial run for all the the bigger competitions. Um, that's nationals, worlds, and the Olympics. Are you feeling any pressure at all? I mean, everybody's saying he's the next guy. Yeah. I mean, and they're talking about the Olympic Games at home in Canada. Are you feeling mm -hmm. any pressure? Uh, not par particularly the the Olympics. Uh, not because of the Olympics. Uh, just I think the overall expectations that the Canadians have um, on me and uh, the other Canadians. So, and also because of Jeff retiring, I think a lot of it has passed. A really, he passed a really big torch to me and. Um, it's kind of heavy, I guess. <laughs> so I think it's just a, it's a matter of getting used to, and I, I am. I am getting used to it, and I have great support from the whole team. So it's really, really helpful. Last one, you know, uh, when we watch you, we know when you're on your game just by watching. When you're out there, mm -hmm. when does it feel <clears throat> like you're on your game? I think when I hear the, the, the skater before me getting his marks, uh, that's when I know. And I, I, when I'm skating around and I feel really grounded and I don't feel that nervousness the you know when I get nervous I get kind of light and I don't really feel comfortable um, but it's when I I feel a little bit nervous but not too nervous and I just feel really great and ready to go and fired up Patrick congratulations on what you've done so far this season all the best of luck to you thank you there's Patrick Chan Brenda back to you that's cool stable kid really good interview and uh, and I like the fact that he's acknowledging the um, the fact that his two wins weren't spectacular wins, that there's lots of room for improvement. He seems to have his blinders pretty wide right now, so he's seeing everything. He's not too focused on one thing, and that's an optimistic thing for me. And I like the fact that he was able to, to tell us that, yes, he is feeling the pressure because of Jeffrey retiring. A lot of skaters don't even want to admit to that, at least publicly. Uh, the two American skaters are here as well. Uh, most of us would have thought that Evan Lysacek would have been one of them, but he did not qualify. Uh, the two skaters here from the U.S. are uh, the reigning world bronze medalist, Johnny Weir, and the other one, a guy named Jeremy Abbott. Jeremy who? <laughs> You know, that's what I said. Oh, hey. hey, that has to be the surprise, though, for U.S. skating, is that uh, Jeremy Abbott is the leader among American men's coming into this Grand Prix final. He was 11th at the World Championships. Uh, Kirk, you know him well. You've worked with him. He's a terrific skater that's yeah. putting it together he this came, year. Uh, he came into Toronto and worked with me on a program when he was just Jeremy, before he was Jeremy <laughs> Abbott. And, um, and I haven't seen him since. <laughs> and he is basically the kind of skater that impressed me. So when you work on... on on the ice with somebody and you know that you really get a feeling about whether this not this skater can what we say really skate and this kid's a skater uh, Patrick isn't the only teenager here there's also another one 19 year old uh, Japanese skater Takahiko Kazuka 
Smooth. Very smooth. Mm, the kid's got smooth, smooth skating style. I think he's almost like a throwback, like a Robin Cousins almost. Super, super slick, understated, um, and has jumps. And this, this kid is just capable of coming in under the radar, just collecting a lot of points. He doesn't do anything garish. Yeah. And nothing, uh, you know, sticks out and right. sticks in your craw on this guy. It's just great. And we're seeing the changing of the guard in men's skating. I mean, here we've got the guys, the three leaders coming in here were 8th, ninth, and 11th at the World Championships. And they're, they're moving in. Oh. And wow. they're raising the bar and you know, uh, setting year. it high. Yeah, and the quad isn't the king anymore. You know, it's the, it's overall. good skating. It's the well, it is the king for the next guy we're going to talk about, and that's uh, the reigning world. <laughs> silver, yes, the world silver medalist Brian Joubert. He is here, and that is no surprise. Well, Brian loves his quad, uh, and uh, and I think that sometimes I get he gets sidetracked with that one jumps that um, puts so much pressure on the rest of his program that uh, he just forgets to do, you know, the All simple the things. Stuff. He will miss a double axle or a triple lutz or triple flip, things that are so easy for him. So he seems a little bit unorganized this season. Yeah, and, and we've seen that. We saw him at the World Championships with that. We kind of are looking at him being more, uh, working smarter, not just harder in his programs. But I still see him as the big shark in a small pond. He's capable. Well, he did what he had to do in the short program. He was third, but he had to pull out of the free skate, unfortunately, for wow. the fans because of back pain. And here he is now with Scott Russell. Brenda, here's the 2007 world champion Brian Joubert of France who's decided to make an early withdrawal from the Grand Prix final. Brian, what's up? Uh, today I tried to, um, to practice and I, uh, I have a big problem with my back. Uh, I feel a big pain. I cannot breathe. I cannot move. So um, I'm not in the best condition for this free program, so I don't want to, to come on the ice, do a uh, very bad competition, and uh, especially uh, I really want to to go back to, to France um, to see uh, the, my medical staff and to get ready for the Europeans uh, in January. Is this something that concerns you over the long term as you build towards the World Championships in Los Angeles? You didn't have the best result at the Grand Prix of France. You came back strong at the Grand Prix uh, of Russia. But is this something that concerns you over the long term? The problem, you know, my, the beginning um, of the season is so difficult for me. I was late. And um, to be ready for the Cup of Russia, I, I worked a lot. And I think I, I pay it. Uh, physically, I'm tired. And um, that's why my. I have this problem with my back because, uh, um, you know, um, I'm not a flexible guy. So um, my muscles was hot tired, and that's why uh, I have this injury. Brian, uh, all the best uh, getting over the injury and uh, for the rest of the season. Thank you. Brian Joubert of France, the world champion in 2007. Brenda? Not a flexible guy, he calls himself, but a guy, Brenda, who likes to torque himself into all these quads. And incidentally, I have never in all my years covering skating seen so many competitors pull out of a competition, a mixture of illness and also injury. And I think, you know, with traveling to Korea and the different types of food, but also it's a hard Grand Prix season and uh, these uh, bodies are under a lot of stress, Kurt. Yeah, I think that they compete more than we did in our generation and they compete at a very high level the whole season and it's it's tough and it's near the end of the season for these guys so it's understandable but it's it's unfortunate well Patrick Chan was feeling great physically mentally heading into this competition but he sure struggled in the short program yeah and it's third, third highest score in the short program coming into the competition but this great. is where we saw some in inconsistency that you addressed at the top. Well, you know, it all happens so fast, and um, sometimes it's, it's like a car crash. It's like, where did that come from? And I think that maybe it's so much coming at Patrick at the same time that we're expecting a lot of him. He's expecting a lot of himself, but eventually gravity gravity's everywhere. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it's going to get you just a split second. So, but you know what? It's going to be a good learning uh, opportunity for Patrick, and I hope he takes it and, and, and does learn from it. It's yep. not over yet. That's right. Well, here's a look at how things stood after the short program. Japan's Takahiko Kazuka led the field, followed by Jeremy Abbott. Fellow American Johnny Weir was fourth. Czech Republic's Thomas Werner, fifth. And Patrick Chan was sixth. When we return, the men's free skate, the Canadian champion tries to re- Going to see today for the free skate.
And Curtin Tracy, before the season started, Patrick's goals were to medal at both of his Grand Prix events. He did that. And then another goal was to place higher at the Grand Prix final than he did last year when he was fifth. And he can certainly do that with a solid skate here. Skating to Rachmaninoff, choreographed by Lori Nickel. Getting ready here for his opening triple. It's a triple axel. Very loose in the air. It's like he never really committed to the jump, actually. I wasn't typical Patrick at all. Triple, triple combination. That was huge. It was big, but what I loved is his recovery between the little over rotated. His left shoulder was starting to spin. He's got the presence of mind to bring it back, take a fraction of a second to pull off a beautiful triple toe. So important to come back from a mistake strong. Well, last season was one of first for Patrick. He won his first Grand Prix event, went to his first Grand Prix final, won his first Canadian title, and then competed in his first Senior World Championships where he finished ninth. Second triple axle planned here. Oh, and again, down on it. One thing does lead to another. Certainly, it's so difficult to recover from two hard, hard falls, not just normal falls. And you can see him sort of stabbing his foot into the ice on the landings. But what's amazing is that the rest of the program is not really being affected. He's holding it very strong, executing his edges, keeping his posture, and integrity of the program stays true. Love the way that triple loop came right out of footwork. I had no idea it was coming. program, extra points. Great, great rocker into that double axle. It's just a turn, but it's the execution, the lean of the body, all those things just shows that his skating quality is up there with the best in the world. Looks trained. 
He does, and you know, with those two mistakes that you talked about, it did not affect any other part of his program. In fact, if you'd have turned it on after those mistakes, you would have no idea he'd made such major errors. Such a professional at such a young age. Well, he was sixth after the short program. How much do you think that hurt or improved his chances of moving up in the standings? Oh, it hurt big time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it hurt. Those are a it lot of helps. points. <laughs> <laughs> With the triple axle, so many points, and to, to go down on it. Uh, watch this one. Here's the first one. Kurt, you talked about him being loose in the air. Loose in the air, and then you can see the right arm going down. I don't know how many times I've told him, don't ever drop that right arm. Trust me, I know. I paid the price. Okay, you've been there, have you? Yeah. And this one just doesn't make it very far. You can see the blade catching and his momentum getting past the point. And questionable that he got the complete rotation for that uh, second triple axle. If he uh, rotated part of it on the ice before the fall, he'll get no points for it virtually. And he also had to give up the chance to do another jump after the second axle. So he, he really lost hurt. a lot there. Yeah. Well, there's his score, 137. you got to remember that he had the highest free skate score of anyone this season and it was almost 20 points higher and his total well Brenda and Patrick I didn't see that characteristic smile when the program was immediately over yeah. it looked like frustration mm -hmm. and I'm wondering whether it was frustration with what happened with the program or frustration even with yourself I think it's just frustration overall um, with myself with um, the situation you know everything was a bit not going my way of course, you know, I'm so used to having it my way. It's very hard to go from winning two Grand Prix and then suddenly having a hard time at uh, practices and in competition. So I think it was a, it was a hard effort, and, but I was still very proud of myself and turned it around and really made it positive. Uh, the triple axle, it seemed, uh, was the problematic yeah. thing. Uh, was that something that gave you trouble all week long here? Or? Yeah, I think it, it gave me trouble before coming and, you know, when I got here. Um, I think... It's just a matter of going back to the basics, pretty much, um, you know, like football coaches. They, if something's not right, they just go back to when they had success and when things did work out. Um, they'll probably watch the videos like I will. I will I'll watch my old triple axles on video and see what I'm not doing now that I did before. Well, this is Johnny Weir, and he was the 2001 World Junior Champion, but never really delivered on all that promise at the senior level. Then, last season, he really hit pay dirt, finishing third at the World Championships. Well, for talking about confidence, this is the skaters whose confidence is growing. He has a very consistent triple axle. He'll start with that jump in combination. He had so much time in the air for that jump, though. I'm surprised he didn't do a triple for his second jump. It was obvious that he didn't even have it planned. Must be part of his game plan. If it worked once, let's do it again. Second triple axle. program the first two triples the second one a double axle it is unusual to repeat the jump so many times in succession but typically what he's building to in the end of the season is opening with a quad and then adding the axle a work in progress Well, he made a huge decision at the end of the 2007 season when he left his lifelong coach, Priscilla Hill, and he moved to train with Galina Smyanskaya and her son-in-law, Victor Petrenko.
looking a little tired at this point in the program. He had turned a previous triple to a double. That one a little tilted in the air. There, now he's back on track. track with a triple flip but Tracy I find his priorities have changed a little bit I find this program more about getting the check marks and a little less about being Johnny Weir and maybe the priority shift is actually a good thing for him it's not quite as entertaining as I'm used to him being he's a little more serious about his job but I think for him it's a good thing tremendously popular here in South Korea. In fact, after this competition, he's staying to perform exhibitions alongside Yuna Kim. He's got a wonderful fan base worldwide. Maybe even more than he does in the United States. He works hard, though, to keep that fan base on the ice and off the ice. American Johnny Weir fourth after the short program. This is his third Grand Prix final. It's like he's a local. Johnny's a great athlete, Johnny but he's also a Weir, smart guy. He uses his talent for languages to uh, make the local crowd love him in the press conferences. Now this, I think, is a tactical error by Johnny. Triple axel, double toe. He did not do a triple-triple combination in this program. And that is just inexcusably leaving points on the table. Again, another triple-double. I thought for sure after that first triple axel, he could easily have turned a triple toe. That's something you have to practice in training. Maybe it's not part of his plan, Kurt, but it should be. Maybe not now, but it should be. And that's like leaving two triples at home. He's going to need a score of around 134 to move ahead of Thomas Werner. And his score will be 143, so he easily moves into the lead, but that is below his season best score. Well, so. Johnny Weir of the United States, the World Championship bronze medalist. You know, sometimes, Johnny, the circumstances aren't always the best, but maybe it's about delivering something of substance on the day. I'm wondering if you believe you've done that. I did about half that. I didn't bring everything that I had. I tried to give my maximum, but uh, it's, it's been a very difficult week and a very difficult past few weeks for me, so I'm pleased with what I was able to accomplish today. It's midway point of the season. I'm sure you envision a tough American National Championship coming up with Evan Lysacek there and Jeremy Abbott is delivering here at the Grand Prix Final. And then there's Brandon Morose and all of a sudden things as they are in Canada are kind of wide open. Do you see that and it being fiercely competitive? It is very competitive. I'm, I'm proud to be a part of such a strong American field. It's always been a focus on the American ladies and now the men are coming to the forefront and I'm so excited about that just as long as I can keep my level and stay on the world team and hopefully uh, stay on the Olympic team for next year. That's, that's what I worry about. The other boys can have good days, I can have bad days and vice versa. So it's anyone's game, but I feel as though if I skate well and I skate my best, I shouldn't have a problem. Listen, you've been around this game for a while now. Is it, is it still fun? I know I don't want to sound trite, but is it still fun for you? Well, it's fun when Canadian reporters kind of allude to the fact that I'm old. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I still enjoy it. There are days when it's too much and I can't handle everything that's thrown at me, but I try my best and if, if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be doing it still. All the best to you, Johnny. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Come on, Scott, he's only 24 years old. Uh, <laughs> Tola Crest and reincarnated a little bit there. <laughs> Well, this has been a coming out party for American Jeremy Abbott. He had never stood on the Grand Prix podium 
but this year won the Cup of Russia. And is second after the short program here at the Grand Prix Final. Eleventh at the World Championships, he's skating here to eight seasons tango. Choreographed by Tom Dixon. You could see a wobble in the rotation in the air, like his head wasn't over top the rest of his body, and you see that he had to struggle a little, little bit in the landing. Difficult entry into that triple flip, and that's consistent throughout this program with his jumps. Almost all of them coming out of footwork. I don't think Tom Dixon does easy choreography. He's not the right choreographer for everybody. That's hard. No speed, be able to show that, mo that good position. Interesting, he leaves triple axle into later in the program, a difficult entrance and a really clean landing. High three foot, super speed. Wow. That was impressive. And again, another triple. There's no setup, no telegraphing the jump, just right out of the program. As he's hitting the halfway part here, I should tell you that all of the jumps from here on to the end of the program get a bonus because they're done at the end, an extra 10%. He still has a second triple axle planned. And if you do repeat a jump in the program, the second one must be in combination. So here it comes, triple axel combination. Great control with that stop out of a loop turn. Again, bonus points because it's at the end of the program. And that's the first triple triple double in the combination in the competition as well. Consistently throwing jumps out of nowhere. I hate saying that because we always say that, but it's true. These jumps flying out of the choreography. Jeremy Abbott capable of doing the big four revolution quad jump, deciding not to do it. Even though in some of the press conferences he said that he had a goal of doing it at the Grand Prix Final, but maybe he sees himself on the podium now and is not wanting to take the risk. I don't think he needs to. He's actually also reminding me of a Jack Bottle. There's not one part of his skating that stands out above the others. They all stand out. Spins, footwork, presentation, jumps. Well, Jeremy had said that after winning the Cup of China that for the first time in his career, he felt he had performed two complete programs in the same competition. Curtin Tracy has done it again here. And what a great moment for a skater to know that they've done everything that they can do. They had a game plan, came in, 
And I'm impressed. Quality everywhere. And especially, again, the footwork into the triple jumps, beautifully timed to the music. Triple axle, double toe coming after the halfway. So that's how you work the system. That's how you pick up extra marks. At the entrance to the triple axle was so unique. Well, let's watch his free skate score. Remember, Canada's Patrick Chan has the season best score of 156.7. Trains in Colorado at altitude and obviously helping his performance. Look at the free skate score, 159.46. That's approaching Jeffrey Butteland. Jeffrey had a 163 at the World Championships. This guy's a contender for the world title. And he didn't even put in his quad today. Watch out, Johnny Weir. Here's our final skater of the afternoon. He is the 2006 World Junior Champion, the leader after the short program, 19-year-old Takahiko Kazuka. And he, like Patrick Chan, made his senior world championship debut last season in Sweden. Patrick finished ninth. Takahiko was eighth. Getting last-minute advice from his coach, Nobu Sato, the father of 1994 world champion Yuka Sato. And it is a family affair. This program was choreographed by Yuka with Romeo and Juliet. Yuka skating always about simplicity, clean lines, perfect edges. All of that you can see in this young skater, but he also is learning his quad toe right here. Very good close. Good effort, good effort. Triple axle planned here. Triple axle, triple toe. about this being a family affair. His father is also one of his coaches, Tsukuhiko Kozuka, who competed for Japan at the Grenoble Olympics. A lot of experience going into this performance. Well, there isn't a lot of experience in this group of men at the Grand Prix Final. This is his first trip to the Grand Prix Final, and I just, I think it's great how the youth is actually executing at a high level of expectation under pressure. Well, two of the Japanese favorites, Nobunari Oda and Daisuke Takahashi, are here. Takahashi is out with an injury. And then Oda only competed in one of the required two Grand Prix events, which would allow you to qualify for this final.
the end of his program. Remember, though, Abbott was able to do a triple-triple-double. some tough timing on that triple loop fall because he's building up for his second triple axel right here late, late in the program. He has a five point lead in the short program, but the last 30 seconds might have taken care of that. Well, a solid skate by the 19-year-old, but doubtful it's going to be enough to move him ahead of leader, American Jeremy Abbott. Well, on a personal level, I'm glad he rotated his quad off the top of the program. Uh, a great skater. What's missing now is some confidence and maturity. Here comes the quad. Watch the landing. Uh, Not only was too. it, yeah, two-foot landing, it looked to be under-rotated, which takes it down from about 10 points to one. So a huge... <laughs> Uh, error there with the quad under rotating. However, had he been able to fully rotate it, he picks up a lot of points. Risk reward. Risk reward. He'll need a score of around 154 to move ahead of Jeremy Abbott, and he's nowhere even close. That will leave him in second place, and not too many people I know of would have predicted Jeremy Abbott would walk away with the honors here in Korea. Takahiko Kazuka in second, followed by American Johnny Weir. Canada's Patrick Chan finishes fifth. Now let's join Scott Russell, who's with the Grand Prix final champion. Yeah, here's Jeremy Abbott, and I'll tell you what, Jeremy, after your performance, they could hear the applause all the way back in Colorado. I'm sure about that. Uh, Grand Prix final champion. How's that sound to you? Oh, my God. I can't even be begin to describe it. I mean, I came in here just wanting to do my best and to put out two best performances. And to end up being the champion is just indescribable. I mean, you, you work for it and you hope for it, but you never actually think it's going to happen. This was all about a season of you stepping up, mm -hmm. stepping up in China, following it up with a pretty good result in Russia, mm -hmm. and now this Grand Prix vinyl victory in Seoul, South Korea. Are we talking about the consistency that you've sought, Jeremy? <laughs> Certainly, my goal this season was to be consistent and to be dependable and reliable and just to put out solid performances. And I've definitely done that. I'm, I've definitely done that, and I'm very proud of it. So now you and Tom Zakrychek get ready for uh, the American National Championships yeah. and little battle with <laughs> Evan Lysacek and Johnny Weir and Brandon Morose and the rest. And I'm wondering if you feel now a real part of that mix, that you may, in fact, be able to get that title. I certainly feel a part of that mix. I mean, it's going to be just as much of a fight as this competition was. Um, the men in the United States right now are incredible, and I'm so, I'm so proud to be one of the top men, and it's, it's a very exciting time. Jeremy, congratulations, and all the best to you. Of course, thank you so much. There thank you go, you. the Grand Prix final champion, Jeremy Abbott of the United States. Brenda, back to you. Thanks, Scott. And, you know, I love Scott's comparison between the Korean traffic and the top of the Paris standings because it's busy up there and very chaotic. Yeah, I just hope he remembers where he is at the moment. Um, <laughs> right in the middle of the right traffic. In traffic. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's what's happening. The Paris teams all seem to have the opportunity to take the advance and lead, but there's, it's difficult. It's a really difficult sport. There's two people. Face it, there's two people in the ice close together. The blades could touch, uh, the hand could miss, and what they're doing, they're doing triple jumps more beside each other than they used to in this event. Mm -hmm. It's a tough event, and things can go wrong. And especially early in the season, you do see the progression in the pairs event. Sevchenko and Solkovi, the uh, 
German world champions. We've really been waiting, as Scott said, um, for them to step up and dominate. They haven't. They've been battling back and forth with the Chinese team, Zhang and Zhang, and also another Chinese team, Pang and Tong. Who wants it? We're about to find out. Well, after the short program, the reigning world champions were in the lead, and here they are now. Well, here is the other Russian pair in this competition, Maria Muhortova and Maxim Trankov. And they were the 2005 World Junior Champions and are the reigning European silver medalists. that typically struggles in the free program, often stronger in the short. Let's see if they can pull it together today. There's their twist. Not perfect, but off to a good start. And into side-by-side -side triple sow cows. You could see she opened up in the air. Whatever one partner does, the other gets the credit for. So if she only does a double, it doesn't matter what he did. Yeah, not they in a go good to way. the lowest. Yeah, they yes. go to the lowest Coming into a big throw, throw triple loop. Oh, what a, st a stiff knee on that landing. And if you land on a stiff knee, there's no place for all that energy to go, and the blade just has to slip on the ice. They finished seventh at this year's World Championships in Sweden and have a, a nice rivalry going between themselves and Kawaguchi and Shmirnov. Neither Russian team wants to lose to the other especially with the Russian Nationals just around the corner. Triple toes planned here. And again. Problems for both here. Triple Sal Cow. So important to land that throw cleanly because they use the momentum from her landing straight into the next lift. The judges will recognize that, but what a risk. can hear the audience willing them on. It's interesting that all that was a lot of fun and they're trying to bring the audience in, but that was during a step sequence. And big problems coming out of the lift and you talked about her knees. Again, stiff as a board going into that lift. No spring up into the air. Not helping her partner. I have to 
to admit, I watch this team and I ask myself, how did they make it to this Grand Prix final? They look totally out of sync and out of shape. Tough love, Tracy. Any answers, Kurt? No, just tough <laughs> well, you know, I, I was sitting here thinking that that last lift, he might have got um, his or her hand caught in one of his suspenders. There he is working on his outfit or some injury. He looks, something looks off. Can we, yeah, assume that it's more than just a, a bad day at the office? Marie, well, he I looks don't to know, be in some pain there, you as you see him Russia. kind of grabbing his abdomen. Well, just to make a bad day worse. But, yeah, I mean... Sorry, but questionable choreography, you know, you don't really want to be that blatant, but I couldn't quite understand what she was wearing, what he was wearing, what the story was. Um, so it distracted me, and then, of course, things went worse from there. And when you are, especially, I think it's worse for pairs, but when there's a bad chemistry oh. or when things start going wrong, then it's really hard to get it back. And we can see here that Maxime is not in the kiss and cry. Oh. So there's obviously something wrong with him. So we obviously hope it's nothing too serious. Perhaps a little bit of the virus that's going around. A number of the skaters, the judges and officials struck by food poisoning, stomach ailment. Yeah, don't eat the oysters. Here are Tatiana Volosozar and Stanislav Morozov, the Ukrainian national champions, and they train with the reigning world champions, Aljona Savchenko and Robin Zolkovi, out of Germany with coach Ingo Stoyer. And Tatiana and Stanislav sat in fourth place after the short program. Planning to open here with side-by-side -side triple jumps. Triple toe. And she does a triple for the second. He turns his to a double. Well, this is a team that was fourth in the world in 2007. Last year, they dropped to ninth place. Another triple jump planned here. Triple South Cow. There's the height we've been waiting for. Wow. Beautiful twist. You could see her complete the revolutions long before she came down. Caught cleanly, one hand lift. The last two elements have been very clean. The jumps off the top were sporadic. His jumping technique is um, unusual. Well, Stanislav was the 2000 World Junior Paris champion with, guess who? Aljona Savchenko. But he retired from skating in 2002 after battling some reoccurring injuries, then came back to compete again with Tatiana. Well, if you quit a sport and then come back to it, one would assume that that was because you loved it, but I'm not getting a lot of love off this guy right here. However, is he strong? Yes. I love the way he's able to just pop her up there in the air. Interesting this year as coach Ingo Stoyer wanted him to drop some weight to help him compete. Dropped over 10 kilos. Imagine how big he was. That's over 20 pounds. I need, need the widescreen TV. Gorgeous position in the air on the loop, two foot landing. With that, throw triple sal cow.
though they had some costly mistakes with their jumping problems in this in this program but as far as the overall program the choreography and the polish of it I think it's better than the other teams that we've seen and there's Stanislav's strength again well, I think he came back to the sport because he likes carrying women above his head he's does good it very it. well yeah They are the Ukrainian national champions. They were second at the Cup of China and third at the Cup of Russia. Well, as far as a complete performance and program, it looked like they were well-trained. Sure, they had their problems. As you can see here with the side-by-side -side triple jumps, watch this, look at the height and see how he catches her in the air and then places her down. Other teams, the woman landed on the shoulder. As we're looking at this lift and then a spin. The spins were also very good. But if you could have just taken the mistakes that they made in the opening couple passes of their jumps and made all the mistakes in the same pass, then they wouldn't have lost it, but they kept taking turns making mistakes. It's really too bad. So their free skate score just a little shy of their personal best for the season, but the combined total is a season best, just under 176 points. Now to Ching Peng and Zhang Tong's free skate, and their Achilles heel the past few years has been jump down grades and untimely errors. Because of the downgrades with the jumps that you were talking about, Brenda, they were fifth at the World Championships last season, trying to work their way onto the podium this year. Skating to a collection of tangos, choreographed by Sarah Kawahara from the United States, formerly of Canada. Lovely lift on the double axles at the beginning of their program. Stolen right out of the uh, Jessica DeBay and Bryce Davidson handbook. And into side by side, triple toes. Filling the rink, lifts going from end to end. Choreography with Sarah Kawahara is tough. She's a demanding woman who really wants every second of the music skated to, and they're keeping up to her choreography. I'm impressed. Jan had an Achilles injury just prior to the start of the season, said that he didn't resume full training until just a few weeks ago and says he's really had to build up some of his strength. Fourth at the Olympic Games. They went on to win the World Championships a month later that same year, 2006. Silver in 2007 and then off the podium last year. I love the improvements they've made to their artistry, the complexity of this program and how well they're handling it. Here comes their twist, whoa! 
Interesting, they left their twist to after the halfway mark so they could get an extra 10% as they will for this throw. Perfect. The speed on the landing. And a second throw, throw triple loop. You know what's so fascinating about pairs is that the girl has to be able to decide how high and how far she's been thrown. When a single skater jumps, he knows instantly when he takes off, or her, when he takes off the ice, how high they went, whether or not they need to spin faster or slower. How these girls do it, it's fascinating. Well, Tracy, where we saw a couple of the other male competitors in this event getting tired, this team has decided to put their last two lifts as the last two elements. Working on that bonus, as you talked about. Jing Bang and Zhang Tong, third after the short program. You gotta think they're going to move up with that free skate. Well, if they don't win the event, they should at least win the most improved award. <laughs> I agree with you, Kurt. Very <laughs> impressive. And you even saw China. the lifts at the end of the program, how difficult the entrances were. Not just getting bonus points because it was late in the program, but because of how difficult. Look at this position in the air, and you know it's perfect, as you said it was, Kurt, because of the speed and the flow of the landing. Yeah, you can see her shoulders nice and level, no correction on the landing. And the end of one move becomes the beginning of the next. Very little pause in between the Very elements. Very good work by Sarah, Sarah Kawahara. Their season best free skate score just under 123 points. And they've got a new one here. Over 125 for a total of over 191. So that beats their season best combined score, which they had in Japan. Here are Dan Zhang and Hao Zhang of China. They are still in their early 20s, but have already won three world medals. But they've never won the championship title. Last year, they finished second behind the German pair of Eljona Sevchenko and Robin Sokovi. And they're in second place after the short program, less than two points behind the reigning world champions. Opening here with side-by-side -side jumps, double axle, triple toe. Lots of speed into this throw, triple sal cow. How does she land it so softly from so high? Quality, and it adds up. Watch this entrance coming up into the triple twist. Very difficult to keep the momentum going, yet good height on the twist. on this team has always been that they should develop a better on-ice connection and 
By all accounts, it seems to be a bit better, thanks in large part to their choreographer, Marina Zueva. Well, we saw the improvement with Pang and Tong, and we're seeing it here with these two. He's always been very expressive. And you're really feeling that here in this performance. Difficult spins for individual skaters, but you have to do it simultaneously beside your partner. The ability to slow your spin down when you see you're getting ahead of your partner. Again, a difficult entry into the throw. Oh! I never see her fall on this throw. And right into side-by-side -side triple jumps. Wow. Wow. That's impressive to be able to, to not only come back from a fall, but a fall she never takes. That's a, that's, that throw is always in her back pocket. A lot of people may remember this team from the 2006 Olympics when Dan took a hard fall on a throw, sprained knee ligaments, but somehow finished that performance. And that was a throw quad. They hadn't tried that again since that time. Oh, using sheer strength to hold her up there in this lift at the end of the program. You know, sometimes you can just throw out the whole judging system and just watch the momentum of a team. The pairs event is notoriously close. These guys are not allowed to make mistakes. And if you forget about the marks and just watch momentum, you can see this team losing it compared to the team we just watched. Momentum shifted was on that throw triple loop. Been watching these guys for a lot of years. I've never seen her miss that jump in competition. And while they were able to get their focus back and do the side by side triples, I think it took a little bit of the wind out of their sails. Slightly off sync, though, a very difficult combination of jumps. And look at this here, just way forward on the landing. She was ready to land before she'd come down. But from that camera angle, it was different than the other camera angle we had, and it seemed like he almost threw her to her uh, top part of her body, went outside the circle. And so maybe it was his fault. Probably. That's yes, right. Let's blame him. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's a look at their marks. You can see their free skate score just under 120 points. That will not be enough to put them into first place so they will stay in second place behind Pang and Tong. Now there is just one team who can beat Pang and Tong and our final skaters in this pairs competition the reigning world champions from Germany Aljona Sevchenko, Robin Zolkovi they sat in first place after the short. Opening here with their side-by-side -side jumps, planned triple toe. Triple toe was supposed to be followed by another triple toe there, and they both had troubles.
she was way off on that triple sal cow will not get credit for it. So important when you do a jump that you try to rotate as much as you can, even if you fall. The fact that Eliona didn't even come close to finish the revolutions. And bring down both of them. Well, like Tatiana Volosozar and Stanislav Morozov, their coach is Ingo Stoyer, who was the 1997 World Pairs champion. And he's known for being able to maximize the system in terms of technical difficulty. And that fact has helped them to win the world title, but it obviously makes it very difficult in competition. One little thing goes wrong. First throw coming up here, throw triple flip. from ideal free skate for the reigning world champions. And there's Ingo Steuer looking on. And a cause for concern because there were a lot of mistakes there that will uh, add up to probably not a great result for these two, as good as they are, Kurt. Well, you can see Eliana didn't even complete two revolutions. And that fall will actually probably not be attributed to the throw. She did complete the revolutions. Mostly it was quality things. I love her attention to detail in terms of her body line. Every move has a beautiful position, the turnout and point of the toe, the elegance of her back. I really think so highly of this team, but they just didn't deliver technically today. And that will drop them down into third place. So the Chinese teams will finish 1 2 today. Ching Peng and Yang Tong will finish first. Uh, Dan Zhang and Hao Zhang will finish second. Now let's join Scott Russell with the winners of the Paris competition here in Korea. Scott? Ching Peng and Jian Tong, the 2006 world champions, on top again at the Grand Prix final in Seoul, Korea. Jian, uh, your thoughts about returning to form and getting that magic back? Uh, uh, we're, uh, 
very happy win this uh, competition. As I, I, I want to say a little bit uh, surprised uh, because it's, um, last year we are very low, but this competition so, uh, we are strong and very happy. Well, certainly a big win for the Chinese pair here in Goyang City. Uh, Chinese teams finish one to Zhang, and Zhang takes second. Sepchenko and Zolkovi take the bronze medal. The Ukrainian team is fourth, while the Russians finish fifth and sixth. And just an update on Maxim Trankov, who wasn't in the kissing cry. Well, this is Unikim's reality, the front page of national newspapers. And, and she's got to do it all by herself because there is no supporting cast. Not like we had in Calgary back back in 1988 where it was Kurt and Brian and Elizabeth Manley, a whole bunch of us to share the pressure and to yeah. encourage each other. Yuna does go it alone and when she's in Korea, she's mobbed by fans, paparazzi, a little bit like Britney Spears. I guess that's what it's like to travel with her. And so we talked before going, uh, going to the Grand Prix final about use it as a training run for the Olympic Games, as we've said to the Canadian skaters as well, because this is where you're gonna experience the crazy sound and that sense. adrenaline and try to learn how to deal with it. Yeah, how do you get that sort of atmosphere? So you might as well encapsulate it as much as you can. And another girl that's going to be doing that will be Mao, Mao Sada. And I think that what's interesting for Una is that as great as she is, this situation uh, with Mao, both of them, will define them possibly because it's so crazy the, the intensity is so much that this moment could be too much for them to even handle they're thinking about the rest of their lives and how they're going to think about themselves well malasada the reigning world champion uh she started off a little bit shaky at the beginning of the grand prix season but it's certainly right at the ship right she has a new russian trainer and she felt that the russian trainer was protecting her from injuries and not allowing her to jump enough and to train enough so she went back and uh, went back to her old style of training and that has served her well and she's building uh, for this Grand Prix final but it's interesting a little reminiscent of the Battle of the Bryans with these two they're mm -hmm. quite a phenomenon well one needs the other and isn't isn't it ironic that you need your competitor to make you great but mm -hmm. at the very same time you wake up in the morning and go oh. Oh, I wish she wasn't here. <laughs> <sighs> oh the truth is finally told yeah. uh, <laughs> anyway there is one Canadian in the field and that is uh, Canada's Joanne Rochette the reigning Canadian champion and oh. she has just oozed confidence this season and here she is now with Scott Russell Scott right Brenda there's no question that Joanne Rochette the Canadian champion is one of the headliners here in Goyang City there's her poster right there she comes in with wins at Skate Canada and also at the Grand Prix of France and Joanne I'm wondering if you thought that would happen this season that you'd come to the Grand Prix final as a favorite um, well, actually, I didn't plan anything about the result this year. I just wanted to skate for myself, be more calm on the ice. Um, I had the new choreographers this year that I work with, so my, my first goal was just to improve uh, my ar artistic mark. You know what, I, I read your diary entry early before the season and about The Secret, the book that you had read, and mm -hmm. about recommitting yourself and having confidence in yourself. Why did you think you needed to do that? Um, I just think I need, I need to put the focus on myself and because when I was doing shows, I was able to perform for the fans and enjoy myself. And in competition, I was always uh, more stiff and uptight. So this year, I just want to say, okay, I'm just going to skate like if it's exhibition all the time. You uh, had wins at Skate Canada and the Grand Prix of France. Do you think you've had your best performance of the season yet? And if so, why or why not? Um, I don't think I've had the, my best performances of this season, and this is why those results are so great for me to be able to win without having to do my, my very best. And I just think this season is a, a big marathon, it's a long race, and you know, every single step, uh, every single uh, lap, you don't have to be uh, first all the time. But what really matters to me is uh, the finish line, the end of this season. You know, uh, I can't help noticing right around your neck is a little symbol of the Vancouver <laughs> Olympic Games, and I'm sure that's a, it's a big goal of yours. Are you feeling at all any pressure that it's getting so close now and you have to be right? Um, pressure, yes and no. You can just see it uh, two ways. Uh, of course, it can be pressure on your shoulder, but also um, I'm going to be in Canada and all these people in the stand will be there cheering for me and they all want me to do good. So um, I'm just taking it as uh, one of the last steps of my journey in figure skating and um, I'm just hoping to have a blast there. Joanne, when you feel best on the ice in competition, mm -hmm. how do you feel? 
Um, I'm, I'm just feeling calm and I'm really in the moment, really enjoying the moment. Well, I hope you enjoy the moment here in Korea. All the best to you. Thank you very much. There's Joanne Rochette, the Canadian champion. Brenda? Well, with her two wins on the Grand Prix final, she's got that confidence to always be able to go back to, to learn from, and to inspire her, because she's felt it. She knows what it feels like, so she knows what she's working towards. Yeah, and she said she's working towards the second mark, the, the components mark, but um, I wish that she would keep challenging herself technically, because I feel that there's triple triples waiting to be seen. Well, as you know, when you compete in an event like this, you have to be close to perfection, and she wasn't in her short program earlier. And those triple triples that you were talking about, Kurt, were not to be found in the short program. It is the key ingredient for her. If she is to challenge Mao and Yuna, she's got to be able to do those triple triples under pressure. Well, Joanne was sixth after that short program, and let's take a look at the standings. Uh, Yuna Kim had the lead, but fractions of a point behind her was Mao Asada. Japan's Yukari Nakano was third. Uh, Carolina Koster was fourth, and Japan's Miki Ando was fifth. And to start things off, Canada's Joanne Rochette. And there is her coach, Manon Perron. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Canada, Joanne Rochette. Curtin Tracy, as we mentioned earlier, she had a rough start with a pretty difficult short program for her and finds herself sitting last in the field of six skaters. She turned a triple-triple to a double-double and a triple Lutz to a single Lutz. Program choreographed by Laurie Nickel to the music, Concerto de Aranez. And she will open here with her triple Lutz. It's like she started turning before she finished the jump. And she completed the revolutions, that's always important, but it's not the quality that she's looking for. Much better triple flip. Lots of speed into that triple loop. Perfect landing. She had a career best world placement of fifth in Sweden last March. Her goal this season to finish on the podium at the World Championships. Second triple Lutz coming up here, and she doubled it. This is interesting, she's 0 for 3 in this competition with the triple Lutz, yet in all the other competitions this year, she never missed it. And that is something she does better than anyone else in the world. Beautiful triple toe, triple sow sequence.
Canadian champion, Joanny Rochette. And quite a turnaround from her short program earlier in the week. And this program was deceivingly quiet, just going about her business, especially the second half of the program, nailing her jumps, moving from spin to spin. It was um, just unfortunate that the first jumping pass, especially, didn't work. Really solid triple loop, and you look at her position there on the landing, and she does a nice change of edge coming out. Here's the combination that you talked about, the sequence. Triple toe into a triple sow cow. But interesting that it's the Lutz in this competition that uh, have failed her both in the short and the long program. The Lutz might have got a virus. Well, but <laughs> nothing else did. And like we saw with Patrick Chan earlier, he was able to make the mistakes, but put them out of his focus and really go on to execute a beautiful skate. I just think Joanny has uh, had such a great year in training and it's showing in competition. Very, very solid, beautiful performance once again. Again. Well, her season best score was 124. She had a score there in the free program of 116. Well, Japan's Miki Ando is in a much better place this season than she was in 2007, 2008. But she still hasn't quite recaptured her winning form. A shoulder injury uh, hurt her skating last year and then at the 2008 World Championships in Sweden, she had to pull out during the free skate because of a leg injury. We have to remember she is the 2007 World Champion. Skating to music by Sanson, choreographed by Nikolai Morozov. And if it looks like she's kind of broken down her choreography, it's because she's focusing on this jump, quad sow cow, the only girl to try one. Yes! <laughs> Moving now into a triple flip. A little shaky on the landing. One of the things you have to be careful of with the women skaters is that some of them, when they get tight in competition, under-rotate the jumps. That is the case with Mickey Ondo, so the technical specialist will be watching the landings in slow motion to make sure the jumps were clean. Double axle, triple toe. You mentioned Nikolai Morozov. She trains out of New Jersey with him and is joined in New Jersey by Japanese teammates Fumie Suguri and Oda Nobunari. If you had a running commentary of what was going on in some of the skaters' heads, they would be counting to six in some of their spirals, making sure that they hold that position long enough for the judges to give them credit for a triple lutz, double loop, double loop. We talked about uh, what a star Yuna Kim is in Korea. Same is said about the Japanese skaters, the sport immensely popular in Japan. And Mickey, a big star in her home country and in Korea. Where I felt, Kurt, that uh, Joanne really skated to the music using every beat. To me, in contrast, Mickey Ondo is being very thoughtful about the technical requirements in this program and going from step to step to get the, job, the jumps done. You absolutely read my mind. I, just as you started talking in my mind, I was thinking it's business as usual today. She's ticking them off. And you can see here, she's kind of waiting for the music. Mm -hmm. 
This is the first time it's feeling to me that she's starting to feel the music in this step sequence. And when a skater doesn't use the music, one sits and watches passively. You don't get emotionally involved in the program. Good point. She is the 2007 Women's World Champion. There is Nikolai Morozov, her coach, Miki Ondo of Japan. Well, she was able to stand up on all of the jumps today where we are Miki a little Ando, reserved. Some of them Japan. did look under-rotated. So at this point, the technical specialist will be looking in slow motion at the landing, a different angle than we have. Watch the quad, oh. and you could see there how the foot landed and then finished the rotation on the ice. Here's a double axle, triple toe, Kurt. And you can see how the blade pops back up into the air and then lands farther around. That one will be given full completion, but maybe not even, ooh, both of those two jumps at the end. So this is a, something that's gonna plague her because she, she can give away 10 or 13 points in this program just to the fact that they're gonna downgrade those jumps. That quad sal was so exciting, it took my breath away. But when you slow it down, you realize she didn't complete the rotation. And the quad alone, she loses eight points in the under rotation. Not big visibly, but it's big in the marks. And that would leave her in second place behind Joanne Rochette. Now let's join Scott Russell, who's with the Canadian champion. Thanks, Brenda. The Grand Prix final seemed like it was about Joanne finding the groove again, and you found it near the end of that free skate. Is that the way you saw it? Uh, yes, I think it's definitely been a tough week of, uh, for me. I, w I felt uh, weaker than usual, so uh, I think it's a good learning experience because I was still able to fight through that long program at the very end. And also, I just need to figure out what's uh, best for me, go home and do quality training again. Do you find, Joanne, that it is a long season when you've got the two Grand Prix and then the final, and now you still got to come to the championship season in Saskatoon and all that lies beyond? Do you find it a grind sometimes? Um, yes and no. It just depends on uh, how you pace yourself, and I think I definitely made some mistakes uh, before coming here. Um, I need to rest more and uh, train better, but you know what? I'm just going to rest during the holiday season and spend some quality time and I'm going to come back in January stronger. Where is the optimism in terms of your skating? What do you know is there that you can recapture in time for the World Championships? Um, I know that my spirit is very good, fighting spirit, uh, but I think for Worlds I need to just go home and do lots of um, training. I was a bit injured before coming here, so I missed a bit of uh, uh, an ice session. So I just need to uh, do what I did before Skate Canada. Joanne, thanks and good luck. Thank you. Here is Carolina Costner, the reigning world silver medalist, and she had a tough start to the season, finishing a disappointing fourth at Skate Canada. And after that competition, she made the dec decision to scrap her new free program and return to the old one. This is the program that helped her win the silver medal at the World Championships last year. She returned to it before the Cup of Russia and won that competition. And back is her trademark speed. Opening with a triple-triple combination, triple flip, double toe. Triple Lutz combination with a sequence of jumps and one of the best Triple Lutzes I've seen her do in competition in a long time. Super solid landing, no hesitation. Carolina likes to do forward crossovers more in her programs than most skaters. There she is right now. She has her own unique style. It kind of sets her apart. 
good fight on that triple flip. Carolina is one that's used to those hard falls. She skates with such speed and pushes it to the edge. But when she goes down, boy, it looks like it hurts. I think it does more than look. of speed still at the end of the program into the spiral sequence. a toe pick jumper. Whoops! Steady again. <laughs> she needs to be a toe pick stopper yeah, right there. Very good point. <laughs> well, Carolina still has a European title to defend before we see her again at the Worlds. Uh, there are going to be more than a few women, though, pushing her for that spot on the world podium. You talked about her being a toe pick jumper. Yes. Evidence there. That's, I just say she loves the toe pick jump. She doesn't like the double axle. She shows a lot of preparation beforehand. Here's the triple loop. Usually a good jump for her. Not even close to finishing the revolutions. And going down, she struggled with her landings today, which is unfortunate, but I'm glad to see her fight for those things. Sometimes she lets them get away. That's a good point, Curtin, especially at the early in the season. She did let those landings get away, fighting on later in the season, and she typically does get stronger as the season progresses. Now she had the lead over Joanne Rochette by quite a bit after the short program. Those scores not as good in the free skate as Joanne Rochette. But Brenda, they keep her ahead overall. Yeah, they do keep her ahead. So that's just a little bit below her season best. So she will move into first place ahead of the Canadian champion. Well, the Kleenex box says fight, and there's sure a lot of fight for sure in our next skater. Yukari Nakano, the second of three Japanese skaters in this women's competition. And this is one of my favorite free skates of the season. It's choreographed by Marina Zueva to the music of Giselle. And I watched her at Skate America and she just lit up the arena with her sparkling presence. <laughs> Tracy, there's a few other ways that this girl can light up the arena, and one of them is with her triple axle coming up right now. Almost 
just to step out. And perhaps under-rotated. It's the first time she's tried it this Grand Prix season. Big risk putting it in there. Triple sow, double toe. Yukari has placed in the top five of the past three world championships, but has never been better than third at the Japanese national championships. And does that speak to the depth of women's figure skating in that country? And that was a triple lux turned to a double. Kurt, you talked about watching the women in the spiral sequence and it just appears that they're passing time and counting the holds, but she's one skater to really deliver and skate and perform the spiral sequence. She holds the expression and the music. Don't try this at home. <laughs> She's got the audience on her side now. That takes so much energy to stand on your toe pick, to hold your balance. Yeah, Tracy, I'm starting to see why you like this program so much. It's so great to watch a skater who believes in their choreography. How do you get the audience on side? You know better than anybody. Use the music. If that doesn't work, a red foam nose always comes in handy, too. <laughs> Wouldn't work with this. Music, anyway. thought out program good choreographed four triples only so a little light on the technical side but delightful well yukari won the bronze medal a couple of years ago at the grand prix final sat third after the short program uh, brenda i think they're making a tactical error with this program easy for me to say here but putting in this triple axle uh clearly she rotated finished the rotation on the ice I just think it takes away from the program. She doesn't need that triple axel. She needs to deliver. And when you add the triple axel, you lose something. You have to change what other triple jumps you do. It just kind of throws you off. I, I just think do what you do and do it as well as it's, you can. It's the same conversation a lot of the men have with the quad. Is it worth the risk? Does it take away from the program? Um, you know, I think she feels that to break through to the top, she really needs it. But I think you're right. She might not need it. Well, so the triple there. axle, Brenda, sorry, does get downgraded. Another triple gets downgraded. And that's going to leave her in third place, and there are still two skaters left to come. She'll be disappointed. And there is her new coach, Tatiana Tarasova. She left her longtime coach of three years, Raphael Artunian.
And she definitely has a triple axle in her arsenal. She's put it out in both competitions on the Grand Prix circuit this year. The first one, she two-footed it. In her second competition, she tried it twice in the free program, landing one of the two. She will skate to Masquerade Waltz. She won the Grand Prix final in 2005 and was second in 2006 and 2007. An amazing athlete but I think she's mentally strong too you remember the fall on the triple axle she took at the beginning of her long program at the world championships last year came back and won the thing here comes the triple axle again no fall this time nice double toe afterwards too She has a second triple axel planned up next. If she lands it, she'll be the first woman to land two in one program. Here it comes. That was beautiful. Fantastic pop. I mean, she's down in the knee and then springs. The timing is perfect. Now what? <laughs> How about a triple flipping combination? Okay. <laughs> triple flip, double loop, double loop. She adds an arm in the air for good measure. Well, that was a hard fall there and perhaps an under-rotated triple flip. The other thing I'm finding with this performance, Kurt, is she's very much thinking about what's coming and not performing as much as some of the other skaters. It's very mechanical. And that's not typical of her. I think it's more about the new choreography of Tatiana Tarasova. First program she's done with Tatiana and it takes her away from her lyrical style. She keeps the deep knee bend, but not the connection with the music. This, though, her footwork sequence is where, again, where she now brings the music and the feeling for the music into the performance. champion Maui.
Posada. She sat in second place after the short program was only about a point and a half back of Korea's Yuna Kim. Well, mission accomplished with the two triple axles off the top of the program. First time ever. History accomplished, but I'm I'm thinking about those two triple axles, but my biggest sensation right now is that the music got repetitive. Uh, her energy came in late in the program. These, there were so many Mao Asada fantastic moments. Obviously, this triple axle you're seeing right now, one of them. But this program got repetitive for me. And that's great. You're, you're fantastic. You're the world champion. But you've got Yuna Kim to compete against. Right. So you just, you can't have any deficiencies. Moments going into the jumps where you could see she let down from the music and just was concentrating on the job at hand. Are we being too tough? I mean, she, she is a down huge, a huge talent. There is no question. She's got beautiful, deep knees. Sounds like you don't like your new choreographer. That's Maybe I not. I just didn't want to say that out loud. Yes. <laughs> But you know what? I, I'm a big fan. I really am, and I guess I was a, a little disappointed. Well, that free skate score just off her season best, and the grand total will be just off a season best as well, and will move her into first place. Like you said, Tracy, mission accomplished. It's the emotional aspect I was waiting for. The crowd here at the Goyang International Ice Palace is on pins and needles as they wait for the final skater in this women's competition. And there is her mother, Yuna Kim's mother in the crowd. She can't even watch. And Curtin Tracy, as everyone predicted, it would be a fight to the finish between Yuna Kim and Mao Asada, and that is what we've got. Yuna was the leader after the short program right now. Mao Asada is sitting backstage in first place. And she knows that Mao has landed two triple axles. How do you beat that? Well, she does have a triple-triple combination, which can be huge. She also has a couple of triple Lutzes in the program that Mao Asada did not. Skating to Scheherazade, choreographed by David Wilson. Yeah, Mao has to do those two triple axles because she doesn't have the flip or the lutz. She does simpler jumps, a sow and a toe. But Yuna will need everything today. Triple flip, triple toe. That was huge. We're watching the, the program. I can't help but notice that the double axles are so big and so beautiful. They're not triple axles. Oh, that's too bad. A single Lutz. Just as I was about to say, everything is getting positive grades of execution. Every single thing she does gets more points than it's supposed to on paper.
One more jump left in the program. Double axle. Oh my goodness, that could be dangerous. <laughs> well, Yuna Kim was first after the short program. There's her mother looking on, and it's gonna be a nail biter to see who wins this Grand Prix title. Will it be Yuna Kim or will it be Japan's Mawasada? Well, she started out like gangbusters, and as you said, Kurt not only landing the jumps, but picking up marks for the quality and everything she did. Korea. But that single Lutz got her thinking. You could see the look in her face and she just started to get a little bit tight. Then the fall on the triple sow cow. It's a very difficult entry to that sow cow as well. Straight after the spiral sequence, not a lot of speed late in the program. It's a, it's a risky place. I love that move, by the way. It just says that I'm grown up, I'm maturing right off the top of the program. Here's the triple-triple combination. Look at the height, the distance she covers in the air, and big points for that combination. Mr. Uh, Orser? Look at the height on Brian Orser's <laughs> yeah. jumps. Fantastic. <laughs> and there's the first triple Lutz in combination with a double toe and a double loop. Not a lot of speed on the double loop. Oh, that's just too bad, and that's so, and so difficult. She here's the foul cow, and you know what? That's a big mistake because she did not get up in the air and fully rotate that jump. So I think she could afford one mistake. Oh. She's going to need a score of more than 122 points to move ahead of Mawasada. Here it comes. And she's done it twice this season, but can she do it here at home today? And you believe it the first time this ring's been quiet. Not quite, about a point and a half shy of that, so that will leave Yuna Kim in second place. Well, we knew it was going to be close. Now let's go to Scott, who's with the women's 2008 Grand Prix final winner. Thank you, Brenda. Well, Mawasada came in here as the world champion, and she took on a favored Korean skater in Yuna Kim, but she delivered the performance that was worthy of this Grand Prix final championship. And I'm wondering, Mao, how you feel about the level of your performance. There is no pressure to come to Korea as a world champion. I'm very happy with today's performance because I made two triple axles. It's a successful performance and I'm very pleased. Mao, congratulations to you and thank you very much. Thank you very much. And you can bet we're going to see a replay of this movie again at the World Championships in Los Angeles in March. About two points separated Mao Asada from Yuna Kim today. Carolina Costner finishes third and a strong free skate moves Canada's Joanne Rochette into fourth. Let's go back to Scott with the Grand Prix final silver medalist. Brenda, Yuna Kim second in her hometown of Seoul at the Grand Prix final. An interesting situation to skate in, I'm sure. How do you feel about the result? Well, this is first time to compete in Korea in an international competition. So it was so much pressure for me. <laughs> and I got a call a few days ago. So my stamina was not great. So that's why I missed some jumps. But it was a great experience for me. So I'm happy now. You know what, it's been a wonderful season as a lead up to this with the win at Skate America and the other win on the uh, Grand Prix circuit. Do you think there's enough momentum now to build upon for the World Championships? Well, World Championships is in March, so I have lots of time to build my condition. So I want to be healthy in March, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, did you feel the pressure of competing here in Korea? 
And has your coach Brian Orser and Tracy Wilson, have they helped you deal with that concept of pressure? And if so, how? Mm, there was a, a big crowd for me and it was a little, I was very nervous in the warm up yesterday. But today was not that nervous, but it was so much pressure for me. You got through it, though. Congratulations to you, Yuna. All the best. Thank you. Yuna talked about looking ahead to Worlds and wanting to stay healthy, and that's key for her because if you remember the last two seasons, she won the Grand Prix final and then dealt with injuries going into the World Championships. Her performance compromised at both those worlds, so key for her rivalry with Mao that they both stay healthy. Well, usually after the Grand Prix final, we kind of get a lay of the land, see where everyone <laughs> sits in all four disciplines. Usually. <laughs> It's not the case. No, we don't know. It keeps changing <laughs> all year. I mean, go pick them. Except for Yuna and Mao, who've kind of established their rivalry. Yeah. What about the pairs? Well the, well, the pairs, there's three, maybe the Canadians, four teams that, that are, you know, maybe essential. Maybe the Russians. But, but they're all passing the baton to each other. No one seems to want to take it and run with it. So the pairs is up in the air. The men's event, we're, we're, we're practicing names in the men's <laughs> event. We're not used to saying on television. There's, there's guys popping out of Japan and the United States, Jeremy Abbott. The men's event is up in the air. Jeremy, uh, J um, what's his name? Brian, Brian Joubert, Joubert from France. <laughs> has, he's going to have trouble winning his nationals if he goes. Well, like, it, it's exciting. And he has been. <laughs> You're forgetting forgot his, name his name already. Name already. Yeah. <laughs> and, and typically, we go through the Grand Prix season, and one skater or one team dominates through. And so you say, hey, they just have to keep going. That's not the case. Uh, Dance has had injuries. Uh, Virtua Moyer have been out. We haven't seen where they're going to figure into the mix. So what we can say is, boy, is it exciting, and the doors are wide open. Briefly, let's just take a look at this event from a Canadian perspective with the performance of Patrick Chan and Joanny Rochet. Well, they know they've got work to do, yeah. and that work is dealing with adrenaline. It's it's very, very different when you step into something like that where you're not just somebody kind of chasing, where you're a contender okay, but, and people are gunning for but you. But you know, we got two skaters, and, and um, Joanny's not as young as Patrick, but both of them are at the same point in their career. They're both realizing their potential, and it had to happen. Didn't it have to pop somewhere? So it happened. Now it's time to regroup and move on. Curtin Tracy, thanks for this. Uh, right now, let's join Scott Russell with his final thoughts. Scott.